Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to consider the subject of the three effects of electricity. Now, this will be a series of three videos showing one of the three effects. And in each video, at the top of the video, we're going to reiterate what those three effects are so that we get them clearly in mind. Again, this is a classic exam question. So let's iterate those to start with. The three effects of electricity are magnetism, thermal, and chemical. So those are the three effects of electricity. In this video, we're going to use our Locktronics board uh, from Matrix, and we're going to explore magnetism. So let's bring the camera in and we'll have a look at that. So as we said in our introduction, what we're going to do now is have a look at the first effect of electricity, which is magnetism. Now here I have a bar magnet. Now this bar magnet is a permanent magnet and you've probably seen uh, things like this during your school life. Um, and if we have a look at this little compass that I've got here, you can see that as I move the uh, compass around the bar magnet, it's actually moving the compass around. The compass is actually helping us to track the magnetic field that exists around this bar magnet. Now, if we uh, take the bar magnet away, and just have a look at the compass here, you can see that this is not being affected at all. This circuit is currently switched off and there is absolutely no magnetism within the circuit. So the compass is just maintaining its position pointing at north. What we've got is a very simple circuit that we've set up here. We've got a lamp in there, uh, partly to limit the current flowing and also partly just to show you when the circuit is powered up. Now, if we power the circuit up, we start to get current flowing around the circuit. When current's flowing around the circuit, it's flowing through this component here. Now this component is, you, you could refer to it as an inductor. It's basically just a coil of wire that's all wrapped around on itself many, many times and current passes through there. Now as electricity is passing along the regular wires that feed this circuit, it's generating a magnetic field around itself. But that magnetic field is very, very small in fact, it's not really going to affect our compass at all. However, if we start to bring our compass very close to this inductor, you can start to see that the compass will behave in a very similar way to how it did when we were looking at the bar magnet. So you can see there that that's now starting to snap round and it's pointing uh, away from true north and it's pointing towards the magnetic field. So we can see, we can use the compass there to help us visualise the magnetic field that is surrounding that inductor. Now that's a really important fact, the fact that this is generating a magnetic field. We use that in all sorts of electrical machinery, uh, anything with a motor in it, anything with a relay or a contactor, it's all using the magnetic effect of this electricity. Now what we're going to do is just remove the lamp for a moment and we're just going to uh, insert uh, a normal link there. So when we close the circuit now, there'll be a lot more current flowing than there was before. So what that's going to do, it's going to help us understand that the strength of the magnetic field actually relates to uh, how much current's flowing through there. So if I put my steel nail here and I turn the circuit on, you can see that the nail doesn't really do anything. It just sits there. So there's a magnetic field here, there's current flowing through it, but the steel nail is not responding to that in any way. Let's remove the lamp as we said, and put in a link. So now there's going to be a lot more current flowing into the circuit. And watch what happens to the nail now when we energise the circuit. So you can see there that the magnetic field has got much stronger, it's got much more intense, and it's now actually dragged the steel nail into itself. So the nail has been attracted into that magnetic field. It's much stronger because there's more current flowing through it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check the polarity of the magnetic field. So let's have a little chat about what we mean by that. If we go back to our bar magnet, so if we just have a look at this and bring the compass close to it, you can see there that the compass, the north indicator on the compass, is actually pointing to the south pole. And that's because the north point on the compass is actually lining up with the magnetic flux that surrounds the magnet. So again, if we look at it at this end, we can see that if you think this North Pole is actually pointing in that direction, the compass is lining up with that. So if we bring that round here again, you can see that the North Pole 
is now pointing towards the South Pole, but that indicates that it is the South Pole. It's just lining up with the lines of magnetic flux. So let's have a look at what's happening with the uh, magnetic field surrounding the inductor here. So we'll just leave this as it is because it gives us a nice strong magnetic field. So if we close the circuit, we can see there that the uh, compass is lining up with the lines of magnetic flux. So that means that just like the bar magnet, we've got a north pole here. And if we look at the compass around this side, we can see that's pointing north, but that means it's pointing at the south pole uh, on this side of that magnetic field. So this is actually a DC supply coming into this circuit. Now DC means direct current, and that means that the current is flowing in one direction around the circuit at all times. If we take this DC supply and we turn it around, what we've now done is we've reversed the direction of current through the circuit. So the current is now flowing in the opposite direction. So let's see what happens now with our magnetic field. So you can see there that the magnetic field has now reversed its direction and it is now pointing the opposite way. So from this we can see that the direction that the current flows through the coil makes a difference as to where the north and south pole ends up around that coil. There's a lot more that we need to talk about on magnetism, that will be the future uh, subjects of videos, but we'll be looking at that in a little bit more detail further down the line.